Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to design an insect fed microstrip patch antenna using CST Micro Studio. In order to do that, let's open CST Studio Suite 2022 and click on this new template. Here you can select these microwaves and RF and you can select antennas, then click next. Here you can choose planar and click on next. So the solver will be time domain and after that you just click next and do not change anything in this units. After clicking next you will see here the settings for your project. So the minimum frequency here I will be selecting 2.2 gigahertz and the maximum frequency as 2.6 gigahertz. Here I just want to have the monitors as E field, H field and FOR field. And I'm going to define this fields at 2.4 gigahertz. This is my solution frequency. And after selecting this, I'll just click on next. So finish this. You will see once the initial setting is done, so you can get an editor window like this with the radiation box. Then you can just go to this view and you can uncheck this bounding box. After that, you just go to this uh, view perspective and click on friend. Now this window is ready for creating the geometry. So as a first step, let us create the substrate. To do that, go to modeling and click on the brick here. You just press escape key in your keyboard and you will get a window popped like this. Here you can give the name for this particular brick as substrate and you can give the x min value as minus w s by 2 and x max value as w s by 2. The y min value will be 0 here and y max value will be l s. Similarly, the z min value you can give it as 0 and z max will be leave this component as component 1 you just select the material by clicking on load from material library and type here FR4. You can see here FR4 lossy and you select that and you can confirm the epsilon value of that as 4.3 and mu value as 1. Then you can click on load. Once it is done, you click on OK. You can see here the substrate is created. We will just rotate and see whether the thickness of 1.6 mm is available here. Now let us bring it back to the front view by clicking here on the view perspective and click on front. After that on top of this substrate we will create a feed line and the radiating patch. So let us first create the feed line. So to do that click on this brick press escape and here in this window you just give name as feed and give the x min value as minus w f by 2 and x max as w f by 2. The y min value we can give it as 0 and y max value we can give it as l f. Similarly the z min value we can give it as h and the z max value we can give it as h plus t. Let the component be component 1 and here the material we have to give it as the copper material. So for that we will click on uh, this window and enter copper here. You can see here there is a copper annealed so you can select that and after that you can click load. Then you can click ok here it will ask for the width of the feed. So you can give width of the feed as 2.86 and length of the feed as 14.75 millimeters. Then click OK. So the thickness of the copper layer is going to be 0 0.035. After entering that, you click OK. You can see now the feed line is appearing. Next, we will create the radiating patch by clicking here on the brick. 
So just click on escape and you enter the name as patch. Give the values of x min and x max as minus w p by 2 and w p by 2. Similarly, the y min value you can give it as lf minus l gap and y max as lf minus l gap plus lp. The z min value is h, the z max value is h plus t. Leave this component as component 1 and material this is again copper annealed so you can just click on this preview and you can give the value of lp as 29.5 millimeters and you can see here the patch is created then click ok in order to create the insert gap here so we will once again use this brick and then we will give the name as gap here x min value we can give it as minus w gap by 2 and x max as w gap by 2 y min value we can give it as lf minus l gap and we can give y max value as lf similarly z min value we can give h and z max is h plus t let it be component 1 and this material could be copper annealed then click ok here it is asking the value of w gap so you can give it as 4.34 mm and you can click ok you can see here a strip line is created now let us do some boolean operations in order to create that inset gap and to unite this feed with the patch so to do that first let us select here the patch and then click on this boolean operation click on subtract and select this gap press enter you can see that gap is created then we have to unite feed with the patch so now for that select patch and then click on boolean and you just select add here then click on feed then press enter you can see here the feed and patch are united now let us create the ground plane on the bottom surface of this substrate material so to do that click on this brick and then here you can give the name as ground you can give x min value as minus w s by 2 and x max as w s by 2 y min as 0 and y max as l s then you can give the z min as 0 and z max as minus t leave the component as component 1 and material here you have to choose it as copper annealed then you just click on ok you can see here now the ground plane is created at the bottom of a substrate next we will create the excitation port here so to do that let me just rotate this and let us zoom this to view the port location so here we can see this is the place where we have to create a feed so to do that just click on this pix and click on fig paste and you just double click here now we can see this is highlighted after that we will click on this home and select macros here under macros you select solver go to ports here and click on extension coefficient here you can simply click on calculate you can see here the value of k is 5.46 now what we have to do is we have to create this waveguide port by extending the exercise by k times h on both the sides so close this after that let us go to the simulation and click on waveguide port so here you can give the value as 5.62 into h 
Let us copy this 5.62 H here and paste it in this and this place and here let us keep H. After that we can just click on OK. You can see here a port is created. So this is our excitation port. Now as a final stage we just click on this setup solver and here we can just accuracy you put it as uh, minus 40 itself and here you can just click on normalize and 50 home and also you can just click on this adaptive mesh refinement then afterwards click start here we can see the simulation is completed and now we can get into the results so first let us look at 1d results so go to s parameters and you can see here the designed antenna is resonating at 2.3692 gigahertz with a s11 value of minus 19.97 db similarly let us look at the vswr value corresponds to that 2.3692 the vswr value is 1.22 which is well within the range of 2 is to 1 then we can see the impedance this is a 2.3692 we have 59.75 which is close to 50 ohm then we'll move on to the 2d and 3d radiation patterns so here i can see uh, we have e field and uh, h fields are plotted okay so then we have the surface currents okay this is uh, the 2d results that we can see similarly we'll go to the far fields and we can see the far field pattern radiation pattern here we have the directivity okay so this is the directivity plot wherein we can find uh, the directivity is 6.84 dbi for the designed antenna that's all in this video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe like and share to your friends thank you